When working with direct current, you'll hear about the negative terminal, positive terminal, or the ground. When working with AC, you'll hear about the hot line, the return line, and the ground. The return line can also be the neutral line. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch more terms that people all over the place use. But at its core, it's just a set of simple concepts. First of all, power always flows between two terminals. You'll have a positive and a negative terminal. In direct current, it doesn't change. You have a battery with a positive and negative terminal, or you have a barrel jack where the center of it is positive, or you have a USB plug where one of the pins is positive. You can have two wires coming out of your bench power supply where one of them is positive. Positive refers to the voltage. Whatever you're set at, that's the one we mathematically consider the voltage. As usual, this is backwards from the way electrons actually flow, but we just make do. The negative terminal in DC is always considered zero volts. You might also hear it referred to as the reference voltage. Now, it'll also be called ground on a lot of schematics. There's two reasons for this. First of all, the name unsurprisingly comes from the ground, as in the thing we're standing on. The ground is a huge reservoir of electrons and a huge basket electrons can spill into. Basically, electrons don't like to go into areas that already have enough electrons because that creates a negative charge and it repels itself. And they don't like to come out of a place that's equally balanced with electrons and protons because that creates a positive charge which tries to pull the electrons back in. But the ground is huge, plenty of room to expand. So if you stick an extra electron in there, everything will just spread out real quick and it'll go right in. And if you try to take an electron out, well, it won't take much energy because everything else will settle in and you can take another one. It's obviously not infinite, but it's practically infinite for everyday uses. So the ground, the actual ground, is used as a safety mechanism. So whenever you have a short circuit, a loose wire, and there's runaway electricity, it goes into the ground instead of you. So back to DC. There is no ground in DC. The electricity is not going into the ground. The electrons are not flowing into or out of the ground. They are going around the circuit to the other side of the power supply. If you don't have that, it doesn't work, as I will demonstrate later. It is called ground, honestly, because people are lazy and they don't like change. GND is an easy to understand identifier. It is a similar concept. We consider the negative terminal to be the reference voltage and the ground is the old ultimate reference voltage. No matter what you're doing with ground, it's always considered zero, just because it's the great equalizer. But it's confusing and silly, and I don't like it, but the world doesn't listen to me. Now, if it were just a matter of terminology, this wouldn't really be an issue. But the ground also refers to the actual ground, as in the third pin on the plug that you put in the wall. And direct current can be actually grounded. It's usually called safety grounding or case grounding. And it's the same reason they do it with alternating current. It's just less often done because direct current is usually small electronic devices that are low voltage, low current, and having a short circuit to the case is generally not going to be that harmful. But sometimes it is helpful. And for safety, why not do it all the time? But then there's cost. It's extra wires. That's why it's really not done. Capitalism. But the point is, if nothing's going wrong, nothing ever goes to ground. You've got your positive and negative terminals, and the power's flowing between them. The ground is only there in case something goes horribly wrong to draw the current down away from the human being that's holding the device. So if you have a DC device that is grounded, that's actually grounded, it's referring to the case where any loose wires or short circuits from explosions or melted parts or anything that causes current to flow will flow through the case into the ground. But generally, you're not going to see ground at all, except on schematics where they call the negative terminal ground. It's just another thing that we have to get used to. Now, alternating current is generally going to come from the wall. In the US here, we have the three prime plug that looks like this. There are two flat plugs. These are the two power terminals. And then the rounded third plug is the ground. There are still places in buildings that haven't been renovated that still have two-prong plugs. 
there are adapters you can get, and if you have two prong plugs, get the adapters, because you don't like dying. But they have a third terminal that allows you to plug a three-prong device into a two-prong plug by connecting the third plug to the screw that's holding the socket on the wall, which connects to the metal inside, the cage where everything is, which connects to the walls and the floor, and it goes quite nicely into ground. So AC you'll generally hear described as a hot plug and a return or a neutral wire. One of these is staying the same all the time. That is basically your actual reference voltage. The ground is a reference voltage because it's always going to suck up anything you give it. So it's essentially going to be zero. But you also have zero on one of your plugs. And the other plug goes up and down and up and down. Positive voltage relative to the neutral plug because again, voltage is always a difference. So you get positive voltage, negative voltage, positive, negative, positive, negative, and that's how AC works. Return is another bad name for it because the current is flowing through the wires one way and then back. So both wires carry current. Both wires carry current in both directions. But they decided to call it a return line, implying that the current always goes back to the power company there. In reality, you never see electrons from the power company and they never see electrons from you because electrons move in aggregate very, very slowly and alternating current switches at 60 times a second or 50 if you're over the pond. So your electrons are basically going like tiny, tiny, itty bitty little wiggle that you can't even see. And they're, they're essentially just staying in place, minus all the random bouncing. But for the most part, your electrons just sit there going back and forth the idiot bittiest bit. But once again, we just use the names we're given because we don't run the world. So that's basically all there is to know. In DC, you have a positive and negative terminal. Schematics will say ground. That just means the negative terminal. If you have an actual ground, it will be attached to the case, not any of the circuitry. The only time the actual ground in DC will be applied is if there is a wire are hanging loose that touches the case, or something melts and starts making connections they're not supposed to make, such as tying one of the power traces on the PCB to a screw. In AC, it's the same thing. You've got two plugs. One of them stays pretty constant. That's your reference. That's also called the return line, or the neutral line, which is a much better name for it than return line. And the other one is the hot plug that goes back and forth and back and forth between positive and negative voltage. And your ground, which yes, you should always have, is the same thing. It's essentially a case ground. If any Anything inside your washing machine melts and connects to the case if you've got a wire hanging loose from your water heater. If there's an earthquake and something bounces down and hits the case and starts conducting, it'll go to ground. But if nothing's going wrong, your ground does nothing. In fact, any time that nothing is going wrong, the ground wire is absolutely useless. But when something is going wrong, it saves lives. This is why it's good. So you might say if the ground can accept and give a huge number of electrons, why don't we just use that? Why do we even need two wires? Why don't we use the ground as zero volts instead of the negative terminal? Or if we're counting electrons, why don't we use the ground instead of the positive terminal? Because it just doesn't work. There are different reasons it doesn't work for each type of power supply. For example, a battery has a positive and negative charge on each end that are maintained by the chemistry. If you try to pull electrons from one end or stick them in the other and don't balance the other charge, then the charge that's left will repel. If you try to put electrons in the positive end without taking them out of the negative end, the negative end will repel them. If you try to take electrons out of the negative end without putting any in the positive end, the positive end will attract them and make it harder and harder to pull them out. So it depends on the structure of your power supply as to why it won't work. But trust me, it won't work. The only thing the ground is good for is dumping charge that you don't want to be there. So let me demonstrate with a battery. So I have here a battery to which I have taped some water. Wires. Let's plug it into my breadboard, positive, negative, and confirm the voltage, 1.565 volts. I also have a resistor. It is 9.98 or 9.97 kilo ohms. So if I make a circuit out of this, go from power to resistor, and we stick in our meter, connect to the power, and measure amps, we are getting 155 microamps, because that is a big resistor for a little battery. Now we have my power supply. It's got the black for negative and the red for positive, but it's also got a green for ground that just connects to the plug. I have my red lead connected to the green wire because this is a cheap Chinese power supply and they decided to not send me a green wire. And here's the plug. Let's use the continuity test to confirm that we're getting to the plug. So plug the power supply into the breadboard. That's the ground plug. One side of the meter into the same. Then we take the other side of the meter and touch it to the ground pin on the plug. 
and you can see there is a connection. For fun, let's measure the resistance. A whopping 0.4 ohms. When I measured it earlier, it was more like 1.3, but I was using different wires. As you can see, wires really are insignificant in the grand scheme of things, until you get to the most high end of applications. So now let's plug my power supply in. Confirm it turns on, and it does, but we don't need it on because we're only using the ground plug. That's just to make sure that the ground plug is in fact connected to the wall. So we have here the battery connected to the resistor, and I'll plug my meter in once again, to confirm that we are getting the same roughly 156 microamps. So now, let's swap that out for a ground plug. So let's do the positive terminal. Instead of the positive terminal of the battery, I will use the ground plug. No current. Let's put it back in. Yep, there it is. Now let's replace the negative terminal. Nope, nothing, nothing at all. And now the negative terminal. As you can see, using the ground as a reference voltage for transmitting current through a circuit doesn't work. This is why it's so annoying that they call it the ground in schematics. I spent probably the first three hours of my life that I was learning electronics trying to understand how these circuits could possibly work when they were connected to ground like they were. And what is even worse is when you have a schematic that has a wire going from the positive of the power through stuff around to the negative, it actually shows connecting to the positive and negative, and they still have that little ground symbol. So they have it connected to the negative terminal and the ground, like it's different. And it was driving me bonkers until I finally discovered that ground is just a bad name. Ground is already a thing. Ground is the ground. Ground is your safety plug. Ground is your charge sink. Ground connects to your case, your chassis, in the event your circuit us blowed. So hopefully I have saved someone somewhere some frustration in trying to understand these schematics. For DC, you have a positive and negative terminal, and they stay there. For alternating current, you have one plug that is a reference voltage that stays about where it is, and the hot one goes up and down and up and down. Now voltage is always a difference, so when I say the reference one stays at the same voltage, what I mean is imagine an anchor point and you're measuring back and forth. Saying something has a voltage, saying a point in a circuit has a voltage is just shorthand. There's really nothing wrong with thinking about it that way, as long as you don't get confused. If you get confused, then be more careful. But conceptually, you can think of a point having a voltage, because somewhere in your circuit, you have a reference voltage, whether it's the negative terminal or the neutral line. Whenever you say something has a voltage, it's referencing that. So saying the neutral line has a zero voltage is just a way to say, if you measure from the neutral line to the neutral line, there's no difference. Saying that the hot line goes from positive to negative to positive to negative means you're referencing it from the neutral line. The difference between the hot and the neutral becomes positive and negative and positive and negative. But the ground is just the ground. If you see ground in a circuit, they really mean the neutral line or the negative terminal, because the actual ground will be connected to the case the thing is in. And that's it. Long-winded as usual, but I like to go over things in different ways and share little tidbits of my thinking along the way. This is not just an instructional tutorial set of videos. This is me talking to you. This is a chronicle of me learning electronics because I'm learning as I go too. I have had to re-record several videos finding out I was wrong about something because I don't want to be wrong. And if I'm ever wrong and it slips into a video, please do tell me. But until that fateful day, be seeing you.